Hey guys, it's Dominique LaRae. Welcome back to another video. I was asked by a few people to make a video about tips on the application process for medical laboratory science and technology programs. Becoming a medical laboratory professional is a commitment of time and money. So it is important to choose a program that fits your goals as well as your lifestyle and learning needs. So yeah, definitely make sure you are doing your research to find the best program for you. I came up with five considerations that you should know before you submit your applications. The most important thing you need to know is how to find accredited programs. The National Accrediting Agency for Clinical Laboratory Sciences or NACLS provides accreditation for medical laboratory science and technology programs in the United States. So these kinds of programs will be titled medical laboratory science or medical laboratory technology as well as the more older terms of clinical laboratory science and clinical laboratory technology, and maybe even medical technology. So there's many different names that your program might have, but what you're looking for is that NACLS accreditation so that you know when you graduate, you will be eligible to sit for the national certifying exam right away, as well as be eligible for state licensing if you need it. I suggest using the NACLS website, naacls.org, to find accredited colleges and universities in your preferred state. Okay, the first thing you see on the homepage are the tabs at the top right. If you click find a program, it will show you all the accredited programs by country. There's tons of professional programs for the laboratory field, but our concern is MLS and MLT. So yeah, if you ever want to check accreditation of a program of your interest, just search the college or university's name here, and the site will provide you with the school's name and director's contact information. Next thing to know is what level of education are you seeking? There are several degree options for medical laboratory science and technology, associates, bachelors, post-baccalaureate certificate, and master degrees. The level of education that you will receive in a NACLS accredited program will determine which national exam you will take upon graduating. So ask yourself, what kind of medical laboratory professional do you want to be? It's up to you on what point you are in life to decide which program will be best for you so that you can get certified. If you want to become a medical laboratory technician, you can look into two-year associate programs at community or technical colleges. If you want to become a medical laboratory scientist or medical technologist, then you'll be looking into bachelor level programs and up. If you already have a bachelor's in a science, you may actually be a better fit for the advanced post bac certificate programs or the entry level masters at universities and medical colleges and sometimes hospitals have their own programs as well. Another thing to consider with the level of education you are seeking is the cost of the program. I'm definitely going to throw that in there because education is not cheap. That in mind, if you already have a bachelor's, you can also do the MLT associates if you want. Just sit for the MLT exam and gain work experience, then sit for the MLS exam later. So there's many opportunities depending on where you are in your journey and where you want to be long term to decide which education route is best for you. So with us talking about programs, there's a few statistics that I want you to look into when comparing programs. Most will showcase these program outcomes on their website, which are statistics provided to future applicants to see how well this program is doing and how well they are performing. Our main concern is the Board of Certification. So let's examine their pass rate. What was the success rate for students getting certified in this program? This is important because it will show how well the program prepares students for the national exam in order for you to get certified so that you can go to work, which is our goal to get a job, <laughs> to get a professional job. Next is graduation rate. So how many students that begin the cohort actually graduate by the end of the program and are awarded a degree? Lastly is job placement rate. This is also important because if you are pursuing medical lab science as a major, you're typically looking at entering the profession to work and get a job once you finish. So what good is a program if the students that graduate can't get a job? So yeah, board of certification pass rate, graduation rate, and job placement rate are the three statistics to look for on the program website, or you can contact the program director and they may uh, give you this information too, but it's just good stuff to know if you plan to compare programs to one another before you apply. Another thing to consider with programs is how they handle clinical rotations. This information might not matter to some people, but consider the clinical placements, especially if your program provides your clinical sites. Some programs make you find your own. But yeah, look at the clinical placements of the program if they provide a list. This will let you know upfront if you will be able to stay close to home and commute to the hospitals, or if you will have to drive very far away or even move temporarily to fulfill your clinical rotation requirement. And then also consider like how long are these clinical rotations? I've seen anywhere from six months to one year or more of clinical rotations. Again, this might not matter to most people, but that's six months to a year of going to these hospitals for 40 hours a week. So I just think it's something to consider if you can find the information, especially if you need to work while you're in school. Having this information early will help you 
determine how flexible your schedule will be and if your job will be accommodating to your school schedule when it's time to do your clinical rotations. So after you figure out what programs you're interested in, the next thing you need to know is what you need to apply to the program. Applications may require certain prerequisite courses. The most common ones may include anatomy and physiology, general chemistry, general biology, pre-calculus and statistics. So those are just a few, but it's very important to pay attention to the specific programs and their requirements so that you are ready for admission into the program. You can also expect to send in your official transcripts for them to evaluate your GPA in those said prereqs. So definitely figure out in advance how to get your official transcripts sent off to the schools because every college may have a different process for how students can request their transcripts to be sent places. Some programs might also want letters of recommendation from professors or previous employers who can speak on your behalf and recommend you to this program for admission on the areas of like academics, work ethics, and even how well you can perform in certain situations. Some programs may even require an interview once they have reviewed your application. This is a way for them to get to know you as a candidate and see if you will be a good fit for their program and their specific teaching styles. So when we talk about um, what's required to apply, let's also talk about what's required to graduate. Program completion will most likely include a specific amount of coursework and clinical rotation hours. It's beneficial to find out this information before you apply so that you can determine how long it will take you to complete this specific program. I've seen programs last anywhere from 12 months up to three years, so it really depends on what your lifestyle is to determine how long you really wanna be a student. Lastly, who can you contact for more information? Having a point of contact will allow you to ask more specific questions to determine if this program is really right for you and your lifestyle. So it's probably best to find out the program director and their number or email so that you can reach out to them if you have questions regarding any information that you cannot find on the website. Just, you know, like specific questions catering to you and the information you are wanting to know about the program before you apply. So yeah, we have talked about what to consider when finding the right medical laboratory science program for you. Please comment below if there are any more things that I may not have mentioned for future applicants that are wanting to apply for medical laboratory programs. If you have any more questions or video ideas, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video, comment down below, and subscribe for more tips and advice for medical laboratory students. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.